Hi, I'm Patrick Sweeney. Welcome to another episode of Live Big. If you're an endurance athlete, you don't want to miss this episode. I'm going all the way to South Africa to find out the most cutting edge, innovative nutritional plan for endurance athletes. When you, when you bonk or hit the wall, that, that's a very nasty experience. And to, to take that away is, is a pretty powerful result for any endurance athlete. A lot of you know that I went from almost 10% body fat to just over 6% body fat for the Everest challenge that I completed back in February. Part of the reason and part of the way that I did that was because of awareness I got from Donald O'Neill. Donald is the producer of two great movies, Serial Killers and then Serial Killers 2 which is also called Run on Fat. So, Donald, welcome to the show. How does it work for our viewers the, to switch from a normal American diet, which is referred to as, sta as SAD, right? The standard American diet, because it is SAD. How do you go from processed food, sugar, corn syrup, and everything to being fat adapted? For anybody who's performing, the best way to do it is just cold turkey right out the gate. Your performance will suffer for probably a couple of weeks. What the mistake that science has made is they, they've supposedly fat adapted athletes over a two week period, tested them and they said, oh, the performance is gone. Body will be in a transition phase at that point and that's gonna take probably four to six weeks. So when you eradicate sugars and starches and, and you know, processed foods that provide fast energy to the body, you, you put the body in a position where it's gotta go looking for something else. And, uh, the analogy I always use is a pint of Guinness because you got that beautiful creamy head on the top and you got that dark stuff underneath. To get to that dark stuff you got to get through the head and the body's energy um, tanks are exactly the same. You can't get there unless you're trained to access it so you got to you got to skim that head right off. But you mentioned ketones that, that your body starts producing. What what is a ketone? What's it do and why is it important? It's a, it's a second energy source that's available to the body when the body is put into a, a certain state so fast after about 24 hours the body will naturally start to um, to push out these ketone bodies. So anybody who fasts will will experience uh, unless they're fat adapted they'll experience a real dip in energy and then they'll start to feel almost a sense of elation. The other way um, you can get access to ketones is by taking carbohydrates and sugars out of the diet because um, that sort of fast accessible energy that's available through those foods, once it's taken away, you know, there's nowhere else for the body to go but to set itself up to try and produce these ketone bodies. Um, so cold turkey, you know, eat real food, it's, it's the, the full fat dairy products if you can tolerate them, it's the eggs, the, you know, the, the bacon, the nuts, and avocados, coconut oil, so all of that. Butter in your coffee, butter the, in the, the bulletproof coffee, coffee that I get, drink every morning, yeah. yeah. Get it in, uh, you know, some athletes are using MCT oil as well, yeah. so anything that um, produces uh, <coughs> the capability or the environment for the body to burn fat because the body, body will adapt to ultimately access fat as fuel in the form of uh, ketone bodies which, which the brain prefers and which the heart muscle prefers. So you will become a more efficient organism, seeing you, and he is 6%, believe me. Um, <laughs> you know, for someone training uh, to the extent that you are, to be able to drop that kind of body percentile is, is it's remarkable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It works and it works pretty fast if you let it, but you, you can't go half fast. Got to go through the transition phase. So it's your. It was terrible the first three weeks for me. I was. Yeah. I felt no power, no endurance. I just felt, yeah, yeah. really rough. Once the body is in a position to uh, create these ketones, you'll find that you can um, exist. Your energy levels are much more stable. Proven that athletes can get to probably 75, 80 percent of their VO2 max when they're fully fat adapted with zero requirement for carbohydrates. You go back to you know, the great era of Antarctic exploration and these guys had foods like pemmican which we feature in the movie. Yeah. And that was just pure fat and, and, and protein with abs absolutely no carbohydrates. Shackleton and his boys got out of there alive and, and this is, you know, they had seal blubber and, and very high quality naturally occurring fats. The ultra athletes are already on top of this. Uh, you've got guys like uh, Timmy Olsen, or, um, who's a Western States multiple times winner, and you know he's, he's fat adapted at this point. Uh, Zach Bitter uh, is a US 12R, and I think he's the, maybe the world record holder as well, but he's a phenomenal ultra athlete, and Zach 
uh, has just participated in Jeff Folick's faster study, which we'll publish this year. And you know they put them on the treadmill for three hours, pulled out muscle biopsies, and he can go to I think 75.2 percent of VO2 max, mm, which is wow. about seven minute mile pace, and he will never bonk. So yeah. when I was in Nepal uh, doing the the Everest ride, I was six or seven hours a day without eating a thing, and and I felt absolutely perfect and and I was amazed that because I had planned some places to stop to eat or, or what have you but I, I just didn't I just kept pressing on and uh, and I felt great pressing on and then when I got uh, to Cape Epic for the first day we had a couple of hills that pushed me into a very high heart rate and it pushed me to probably 90 95 percent vo2 max just to get up the hills and I found that we had to put some carbohydrate back in to replenish for those type of efforts. So I think the, you know, once you're fat adapted, at least from my perspective, and I think Sami's as well, you've got to play a little bit with on the individual. It's it's like so many of these things that that come along the line. There's not one perfect prescription for, for everybody. And this is new enough where it's a huge advantage, I think, for athletes like me. And and it's a it's a big differentiator because you won't bonk. But I think it, it takes a little bit more effort to to, to think about what it, what it requires to be adapted and that sort of thing. So how do you recommend people do that? Uh, you know, what have you seen some other athletes do that makes the most sense? Well, at the, let's say the, the professional level, I'm aware of cyclists who will map out their course. They'll understand where the VO2 max is going at any given point, and they'll inject a small amount of carbohydrate just prior to that. So mm -hmm. you know it's coming. Yeah. Um, some people call it trickling. Um, if you take a sports drink, rinse it around in your mouth and spit it out, you actually get a response, um, you, you'll get a, a blood sugar response to that, which is <laughs> kind of bizarre, but there is research to support that. Professor Tim Noakes says that no athlete, irrespective of how much you're doing in any given day, requires more than 200, carbohydr 200 grams of carbohydrates. Playing with all those factors and working out what works best for you and then you know, adapting your own protocol because... Get a couple different recommendations. Get all the carbs and sugars out of your diet. So let's say you know, maybe uh, 25 to 50 grams a day maximum, right? And figuring out what what uh, kind of a diet enables you to have that. But like we said, a lot of nuts and, and avocados and cheese and dairy products and that sort of thing. So that's number one. Number two is trying to figure out um, if if your body reacts to, to working out in a fasted state, and then you can you can get some other advantages. So the third thing, do you see any supplements coming down the line, or do you see any innovations from a, let's call it technology perspective, for lack of anything else, that's gonna take advantage of this new research and, and what we understand about ketosis? And They're researching ketosis and ketones everywhere from you know cancer right through to the Navy SEALs, and, and the one guy people should check out is Professor Dominic D'Agostino down in Florida who's doing remarkable research so whatever's going to happen is probably going to come out of his lab. What's going to come will be the ability to um, to get a, an individual into nutritional ketosis or that type of response without actually undertaking a ketogenic or a very high fat low carbohydrate diet. It looks like they're going to come out with something in the not too distant future that will shunt the body into accessing ketones. Well, that was an awesome interview with Donald and some great information. I hope you found it really useful. Now I've got two things for you. First one is to answer a question almost everyone asks, how do I know if I'm in a state of ketosis? There's two ways to test. One is a urine strip and the other is taking a blood sample, like a glucose meter, like a lot of diabetics do. The urine method is pretty inaccurate. The best way to do it is to take a blood sample right from your finger. It's pretty easy to do. You just prick your finger and then you put your blood on a little bit of a strip. These things are pretty expensive, it takes a couple minutes to do, and your goal should be to get above a value of one. If you get even close to one, you're doing pretty well. Most people, when they first start this, are gonna be 0 0.1, 0 0.2. You, as you start to get into ketosis, you'll get 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, and you're doing really well. 0 0.7, 0 0.8, then you're pretty much in a fat adaptation state at that point. So using that ketosis measurement, that meter, is a great way to do it, and it's highly accurate. What's your favorite high-fat, low-carb diet? Leave us a video or leave some suggestions in the comments below. And for the best high-fat, low-carb diet and the best input we've got, I'll get you the latest copy of Run on Fat from Donald. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I really enjoyed bringing it to you and finding out more. I'm going to do some follow-ups on this diet and this nutritional plan. 
But until next time, I'm Patrick Sweeney. Live big.